Hello and welcome to today's episode. I'm going to talk about Apple WWDC. But before I do that, I have to cover some other news. First, the railway accident in Balasore, Odisha. On 2nd of June 2023, three trains collided near the city of Balasore in Odisha, India. The accident involved a freight train and two trains. 12841 Coromandel Express and 12864 SMVT Bengaluru Hovra SF Express. More than 270 people have died and more than 900 people were injured, possibly as high as 300 dead and 1100 wounded. The accident was caused by a signal fail issue. The Coromandel Express had received to move on to the main line towards Chennai but it switched to a loop line where freight train was waiting. Basically, Coromandel Express was supposed to not stop at a train station and was therefore extremely fast. But instead of moving through the main line, it was routed by signal to an alternate route where freight train was waiting. Therefore, a passenger train collided with a freight train and it derailed. Some of its cars landed on another line and another passage passenger train. SMVT Bangalore Hovra SF Express crashed into those cars. So what caused the accident? Excerpt from first post. Railway Minister Ashwini Vaishnav has stated that a change in, in electronic interlocking was likely a cause, cause of the tragedy. This could have led to incorrect signaling or improper routing that forced the Coromandel Express off the main line. But can this system malfunction? Officials say that the electronic interlocking system can malfunction and when it does, it flashes a red signal, indicating a need to be checked. They hinted that issues could have caused by external interference such as human error. The interlocking system can malfunction under, under certain conditions, such as its sensors being damaged, human manipulations, wrong rewiring during maintenance. A signaling expert in the Indian Railways told Money Control. He added that in the Odisha Rail accident, it was unlikely the error was not due to hint human interference. In this case, the error, the point should have been set to on the normal line and not on the loop line. The point was set on loop line. It is something that cannot happen without human interference. Expert said. Railway Minister Ashwini Vaishnav told reporters, keeping everything in mind, whatever administrative information has been received so far, the Railway Board has recommended that further investigation be carried out by the CBI. The Indian Railways on Sunday ruled out an error on part of the local pilot system malfunction. The official probe, which concluded early on Sunday, indicated a possible sabotage and tampering of the electronic interlocking system behind the triple train accident. Railway Minister Ashwini Vaishnav said on Sunday that a change in ele electronic interlocking was to blame for the catastrophic train disaster that took place in the Balasore district of Odisha on Friday evening. So, I wish the people who died, I wish they rest in peace and I hope the injured recover speedily. Next, State of Russian Economy Russian Central Bank reported minus 2 GDP for financial year 2020-23. Russia expected to fall minus 8% of its GDP. Soviet collapse was, was supposed to be minus 12%. Uh, 2008 fi uh, financial crisis was minus 1% and and the world GDP in Great Depression was minus 15%. 8%, minus 8% or half of the Great Depression would have caused regime change in Russia. But Global, st global South stepped up to trade with Russia. Russia is food and energy self-sufficient just like United States while India and China are only food self-sufficient and Arabs are only energy self-sufficient. So Russia, just like United States, is in a unique position where if, if, if it just stops trading with the outside world, it can produce its own food and its own energy. So, and also, the West was still trading with Russia for its energy and its commodities just via intermediaries like India and China. After Russia was hit with sanctions, 
सेंट्रल एशिया ए के ऑल द स्टैंड एक्सेप्ट पाकिस्तान एंड अफगानिस्तान ए के एल ऑल द फॉर्मर सोवियत कंट्रीज इन द नॉर्थ ऑफ अफगानिस्तान सडनली स्टार्टेड इम्पोर्टिंग अलाउट ऑफ वॉशिंग मशीन रेफ्रिजरेटर्स एंड अदर होम अप्लायसेस मीनिंग रशिया इज ऑल्सो स्टील ट्रेडिंग विद द वेस्ट फॉर इट्स टेक्नोलॉजी वाया इंटरमीडिएट्स इन सेंट्रल एशिया एंड चाइना मीनिंग बोथ रशिया एंड वेस्ट आर स्टील ट्रेडिंग विद ईच अदर जस्ट वाया इंटरमीडिएट्स एंड सम माइनर इनकन्वीनियंसेस मोस्ट रशियंस डोंट फील सैंक्शन एट ऑल unless they are traveling abroad or they are trading internationally so and for this year russian central bank expects minus 8% of g minus 8% gdp growth while the agencies that predicted minus 8% gdp growth now expect russia to grow with 0.3% gdp growth rate meaning russia will either have a mild recession or will get out of recession this year sanctions appear to be failing basically uh, again russia is food and energy self sufficient it's really really hard to topple a regime like that it's with just sanctions if the russians know what the game is being played against them they will support their leader and it's not like gorbachev or tsar rush uh, miss uh, the pre- russian president putin is not a gorbachev or tsar nicholas the second it's, it's not going to happen just i wish they could just stop fighting create a cease initiate a cease fire and then start a peace treaty that should be the only solution and i'll comment on this further which is because it's the next topic because it's the next topic russia ukraine conflict analysis this is a tweet by david sacks a venture capitalist and his tweet went viral recently the tweet was a summary of an analysis of russia ukraine conflict by professor john mersheimer professor john mersheimer is a famous geopolitical expert he predicted this conflict back in 2015 david sacks summarized his analysis in a tweet and i'm going to read it as is it basically confirms everything i've said in my podcast so far so here we go important recent talk by mayor shimer on the current status of ukraine war and what's likely to happen next mayor shimer is the leading scholar of international relations and his predictions about the conflict have been highly accurate going back a decade key points number 1 current status the russians are winning the war ukrainian ukraine had the upper hand in 2022 but russia has it in 2023 the russians have not won yet but mir shimer believes they are winning and will win the war why This is a war of attrition similar to World War 1. The goal is to bleed out the other side. This is Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier standing toe to toe and beating the hell out of each other in the center of the ring. Who wins a war of attrition? Three factors decide. Balance of resolve, both sides are resolved. Population and artillery. Russia had a 3.5 to 1 population advantage. in the beginning of the war this has grown to about 5 to 1 as a result of 8 million plus ukrainian refugees 3 million of which have gone to russia artillery is the king of battle balance of artillery is somewhere between 5 to 1 and 10 to 1 in russia's favor the us doesn't have enough artillery to give ukraine that's why we are talking about tanks and planes two armies standing toe to toe trying to destroy each other with firepower russia has a lot of men and artillery casualty exchange ratio is at least 2 to 1 meaning that two ukrainians are likely dying for every russians the ukrainians claim of 7 to 1 casualty exchange ratio in their favor is ludicrous 
the Russians are not doing mindless frontal assaults. Recent Russi report shows that Russian tactics have improved. Ukraine pushed large number of troops into Bakhmut in a losing effort. In a losing effort, Ukrainians are becoming desperate to conscript men. Russia has not fully mobilized it. Number two, what's likely to happen next? Russia will take four oblasts they already annexed, plus, if they can, another four oblasts to the Dnepro River, including Odessa and Kharkiv. The goal would be to bring all the ethnic Russians under their control to avoid another Donbass problem. Russia doesn't want to take Western Ukraine. Trying to conquer ethnic Ukrainians who hate them would be like trying to swallow a porcupine. But their goal is to turn Ukraine into a dysfunctional rump state so it can't threaten them or be used as a Western bulwark on their border. There's not going to be a peace agreement. Best case is a frozen conflict. Why? Number one, the parties can't agree on territory. Number one, number two, they can't agree on neutrality. Number three, hypernationalism. Hatred on both sides make a deal impossible. Number four, no trust. Western leaders and Zelensky admitted they had no intention of honoring the Minsk agreements and entered them just to buy time. George Cannon, Admiral Bill Perry, AMB, I don't, I don't remember what that is, Jack Matlock and Jan Shalikashvili said that NATO expansion was a prescription for disaster. They were right. It's only going to be only going to get worse. Mersheimer hopes to be wrong about this, but this is his prediction. F-16 won't make a difference because it takes a long time to go train good pilots. Also, Russians have very good air defense and their own air force is ready to engage. Biggest risk of F-16s is that Ukraine can uses them to attack targets inside of Russia, creating an escalation which could draw the US deeper into war. Mayor Scheimer believes that if the Russians are losing the war, the likelihood of nuclear use to rescue the situation is high. The war is existential for the Russians. But, but as it stands now, the odds of nuclear use are very low because the Russians are winning. Basically, everything I've, I've been saying. Odessa and Kharkiv are going to fall. Uh, parts, Other parts of Ukraine are going to be like Chechnya. Like autonomous state, states inside of Russia. They'll, or they'll become failed states like Somalia. I wish they, this is just a stupid war. Just really stupid war. There was no need for NATO expansion. There's no need for NATO to exist, to be honest. But the, I wish I wish the war stops quickly. I wish Ukrainians and Russians stop dying. I wish there is someone who rises up in the West, mainly the United States who has a lot more common sense and will negotiate or will push Ukraine to negotiate. Next story. Ukraine's Kakhovka dam explosion. So there was a dam explosion in the Dnipro river near Kharsan. And this dam exploded uh, and all the water basically started overflowing and they flooded, I, I think they flooded Kharsan. There was a city flood, I think it was Kharsan. Um, this is just like a latest story. I think it came out last night or early in the morning. I saw I saw it early in the morning, so I don't have notes ready for that. Uh, who could have done this? Ukraine. Um, I, there's no advantage for Ukraine to do this. Russia, why would they flood? Uh, there, uh, why would they flood a, a, a city and by exploding a dam even though that 
explosion of that dam will probably cause a water crisis in Crimea. So Russians don't have any incentive. Uh, you can argue that uh, they did this for uh, to slow down and build def more defense against Ukrainian offensive, spring offensive, the spring counter offensive, which is now going to be summer offensive. Uh, but they have already fortified. They have already well defended now for you against the Ukrainian offensive. Uh, I I don't need. I don't think they need to flood a city and explore a dam to do that. Uh, another possibility, I think this was pointed out by Colonel Douglas McGregor, uh, is that uh, he was uh, in the U.S. military, uh, served in Iraq in the 90s. I think that's that's what his credentials are. He served in served in U.S. military. Uh, I think he pointed out this possibility that uh, this was an accident and it could have been maybe it is but in any any case both ukrainians and russians started blaming each other fl for flooding uh, we don't know what's what's the truth this is a developing story now to apple wwdc in 2023 the wwdc 2023 is was special and it was different and bigger than the last years and many years prior to that uh, of course you've heard about you probably heard about apple's vision pro their mixed reality headset uh, and i'll get to that slowly by talking ab uh, about everything else first and making that topic last topic first ios 17 contact posters Apple introduced contact posters that are basically like digital business cards of sorts for iPhone phone app also available for third party contact apps basically what this will do you'll, you'll have your own contact card business card type thing it I think I think it will also appear to other iPhone users who have your contact number nice feature it's I think it's cool name drop a feature of airdrop allows users to share contact information again you can just send contact via airdrop live voicemail transcribes when someone leaves a voicemail facetime adds audio and video messages it um why i i think you i think you can do that with apple messages already i don't i don't have an iphone uh, so i'm just I think you can do that with Apple messages already. So why different messages? I don't know. It also has reactions like hearts, balloons, fireworks, laser beam and more. Messages has emoji sticker and live stickers. They're not going to add RCS, Google. Just just shut down RCS and make a really good messaging app that combines features of uh, signal, Telegram, WhatsApp, and Apple Messages. That's the only way you're going to... Uh, and said that... Uh, combine that uh, with Apple... Uh, combine that with SMS on Android. It's kind of like Apple does with Apple Messages. They have the Apple Messages, but also SMS in the exact same app. Do that on the Android version. And set it as default. Set that me new Messages app as default on all android version android phones so apple uh, so android users have to open that app and they have to interact and they have to use that app and uh, then release an apple version and a web version basically just just copy all the features of telegram whatsapp and apple messages autocorrect will be improved in iphone keyboard this is one of the biggest complaints people have about iPhone keyboards. Uh, they they have they've had terrible autocorrect, and uh, third-party apps aren't as intuitive as the official iPhone keyboard app. Um, I, Android has just better keyboard. 
and uh, it will have some it will have a better keyboard for a long time whether you are using gboard from google or swift key from microsoft I, android just has a better keyboard for now windows phone really had best keyboards but they shut down and no um, the none of android or iphone keyboards are as intuitive as the windows key, phone keyboard standby standby is modified always on display where you can get widgets uh, photos a big clock when the phone is charging and put sideways there's a new app for journaling i don't get why these features of uh, features of these journaling apps journaling app weren't added to apple notes app uh, why why is this a separate app just create like a, a option for new notebook instead of new notebook or new folder there's a there's an option for new journal and uh, inside apple notes app and it does all the features of journal also dev sherlock day one day one is generally has generally been really good journaling app although they've they've uh, fallen off a little bit in the recent years again this should have been a feature of notes app uh, why is there a separate journaling app and there's a separate notes app just uh, add that feature inside notes app anyway uh, safari adds tracking protection features for private browsing private browsing now locks when not in use allowing user to keep tabs open even when stepping away from device so you know uh, you're watching some videos so your family member or friend comes along you can just lock it <laughs> there are a few other health and privacy and access accessibility features uh, ipad os 17 ipad os has a customizable lock screen and live activities like ios 16 last year widgets are now more powerful and interactive like android even even ios 17 has now interactive widgets like android finally they're caught up uh, entering p information in pdfs is now easier than ever ipad os 17 uses machine learning to identify fields in a pdf so users can uh, quickly add details such as names addresses and emails from contacts cool feature um, there are a lot of a lot of terrible PDF apps um, PDF is never intuitive just um, I'll I'll uh, despite all its flaws Microsoft Word is a thousand times better than almost all the PDF apps that that are out there PDF editing and annotating and uh, viewing apps I hope this inspires Google and Microsoft to also make PDFs a lot more easier and user friendly. A big update to Notes app gives users new ways to organize, read, annotate and collaborate on PDFs. Like I said, I hope this pushes Google and Microsoft to work on PDFs even more. PDF is a good format because it maintains the formatting no matter what device you're using uh, you may have noticed on microsoft word or even like a word file uh, it looks different from one computer to to another computer or from one computer to phone pdf don't don't do that pdf is a good format but uh, pdf ed editing is just uh. safari browser now has profiles like work and personal Health app is now on iPad. Does that mean Android users can buy an iPad and use Apple Watch without buying an iPhone? Um, probably not. But it's just their health app. They also announced the ability to set multiple timers at once. In 2023, they announced that users will be able to set multiple timers at once also ipad os 
still does not have an official calculator app. Maybe they'll announce it in 2025 or something. <laughs> Mac OS 14. Mac OS new version it's called Mac OS Sonoma. It, it's like a vineyard in California and they've named it after that. It's default wallpaper looks like the color palette of Windows XP's default web wallpaper applied to the art style of Windows 11's default wallpaper. Safari on Mac has web app support now. Finally, Safari's technology have been behind Google Chrome, Firefox and others for years. Now with web apps, they are catching up to Google Chrome. All Apple needs to do is catching up, uh, a lot of catching up in other web technologies up to Google Chrome and then release Safari for Android, Windows and Linux. They're not going to, Safari is not going to be a real competitor unless it comes on Android and Windows and Linux. They just need to update that to latest web technologies. All the latest web technologies like Google Chrome has uh, and release it for Android, Windows and Linux. There's a new game mode. Game mode also makes gaming on Mac even more immersive, dramatically lowering audio latency with AirPods and significantly reducing input latency with popular game controller like those for Xbox and PlayStation by doubling the Bluetooth sampling rate. They are also making it easier to port games from other platforms to macOS. I think they are using something based on Vine and cross platform, something like that. They're, they are going to make it easier for uh, developers to translate their games from DirectX to Metal. Kind of like what Steam has done with Proton, where you can play Windows games all the latest and greatest games on Linux. I think Apple has fo uh, Apple is following similar path. That that was the only logical conclusion uh, to make it easier to port games and possibly even play games without porting them, like what uh, Valve has done with uh, Steam Proton on Linux. I think that will be good. Uh, I think uh, only. Only because of gamers and graphics editors and few other enterprise and research stuff, Mac uh, because because of all these categories, Mac OS doesn't dominate the premium computer sector like iPhone dominates the premium smartphone sector. Uh, because of enterprise users, because of researchers, because of gamers and graphics designers and ed uh, graphics editors, 3D graphics editors. And if they can, if they can solve at least the uh, gamer part and uh, graphics editors part, I think they will dominate. I think uh, Mac OS will uh, dominate high-end PC hardware. Now, next, Mac hardware. Apple announced 15-inch MacBook Air with M2 chip. So now there are two laptop series with two different screen sizes. 13 and 15 inch MacBook Air, 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, they've moved away from Steve Jobs original motto of two uh, laptops, one for consumers and one for professionals and two desktops, one from consumers and one for professionals. There are too many MacBook variations now. Uh, also, all these MacBooks will have separate processors. Air will have M2 and M2 Pro and MacBook Pro series will have M2 Pro and M2 Max uh, all, in all screen sizes. And also there is a lot of storage, a lot of different storage options. There's now M2 Max and M2 Ultra chips as well. Apple updated Mac Studio with M2 uh, Max and M2 Ultra chips. Apple completed Apple Silicon transition by announcing Mac Pro. The new Mac Pro has the same overall design as the previous Intel based model. However, the new the tower is now equipped with 8 Thunderbolt por, 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 8 Thunderbolt 4 ports instead of 4 2 
higher bandwidth HDMI ports that support up to 8K display at 240Hz, 7 PCIe expansion slots, dual 10 gigabit Ethernet ports, faster Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3 and a headphone jack that supports impedance headphones. So it's not as different uh, from the the Mac Studio. It just has more expansion slots, PCIe expansion slots. Uh, and those expansion slots, you cannot use uh, graphics cards. You can only use like sound cards and uh, dedicated cards and like uh, networking cards on on the new PCIe slots. Um, so the the new uh, Mac Pro is even more niche than the old Intel Silicon Mac Pro. But here's the good news: the new Apple Silicon Mac Pro starts at six thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. But if you want a maxed out Mac Pro, it will cost you forty thousand dollars less than the Intel Mac Pro. That's the good news. You, you, you don't have to sell all your body parts to get the Mac Pro. You can you can uh, just sell your kidneys. Watch OS 10. Uh, Apple Watch has now smart stack. Basically widgets on top of other widgets. Right from the watch face. This is cool. Uh, new watch faces. The palette face depicts time in a wide variety of colors that shift as the time changes. The comic strip Peanuts comes to life life on Apple Watch with the new Snoopy face. New features for cycling, hiking, hiking, mental health and vision health. TVOS 17. Uh, Apple TV has been possibly the best TV, smart TV platform for users. You just have to have an iPhone for it to uh, work great. It has the best, possibly the best user interface out of all the smart TV platforms like uh, Android TV, Google TV, Fire TV, Roku and all that. Most people praise tvOS. Um, there's a new FaceTime app for tvOS. This app will use iPhone's camera with your TV screen. So you can put your iPhone near a, uh, on a stand near a TV, sit on a sofa comfortably and look at other people on your big TV. Uh, this is this is really cool. I wish this feature appeared in 2020 where when everybody was locked up in their own, own homes. I'm just saying. But this is re better late than never, I guess. Uh, and this is cool feature. Easier user interface for profiles and uh, time and other things. On iPhones, users can launch the Apple TV remote inside control center to find the Siri remote. Dolby 8.1 support, enhanced dialogue, Apple Fitness Plus support, and also third-party VPNs. So you know, you get all these VPN ads from YouTubers about Express VPN and all the other VPNs. They they'll probably work with Apple TV now. Uh, I don't know what the terms and conditions of the Apple TV App Store are, but I think they'll work most likely. Now to the headline, Apple Vision Pro. First, I will tell you about the Vision Pro uh, and the, uh, their Vision OS, their operating system. And I'll afterwards, I'll give my opinion under the impressions. Apple announced Apple Vision Pro. It's mixed reality or MR headset. Each eye has a 4K display. It has a display on the front, a button, a digital crown on top and it has multiple cameras, 3D camera and sensors. It has a camera even inside. So on the front uh, front display, other people can see your eyes. It looks creepy and dystopian. Uh, it, they can also see color patterns of what you're seeing sometimes. So if you're watching uh, some videos on your Apple Vision Pro, be careful about the front display. Just be a little careful about the front display. Uh, of course, people have to use it and confirm. I think people on the internet will confirm that. 
if those videos appear on for the front display that's that's the most important users can interact with it using their eyes hands and voice this is cool okay so anyway uh, i'll i'll co i'll talk about it afterwards it also supports keyboard and mouse it has an id scanner called optic id according to apple's website optic id is a new secure authentication system that analyzes users iris under various invisible led light exposures and then compares it to the enrolled optic id data that is protected by the secure enclave to instantly unlock apple vision pro a user's optic id data is fully encrypted is not accessible to apps and never leaves the device meaning it is not stored on apple servers if you have glasses uh, if you can use optical inserts apple has partners partnered with zeiss optics vision os this is the operating system of uh, apple vision pro vision os offers 3d user interface and infinite canvas for apps iphone and ipad apps can run in vision os at launch this is really good vision os will also have its own app store last apple vision pro impressions it appears to be based on what they have advertised on their keynote and in the presentation in wwdc 2023 it just appears to be more immersive and interactive television set just interactive and it does everything it has m2 chip the same m2 chip that apple macbook air has um and also r1 chip i think it's called uh, again there's a, that's a lot of processing power uh, the, there's a sep the battery is separate to reduce weight on the head i think this is a good idea uh because a lot of these headsets are heavy because in their headsets they have battery in their in the headset and makes it heavy on the on your head uh but with apple vision pro the battery pack is separate and you can put it on your in your left or right pocket i think in your left pocket uh while you are using the headset on just or just put it on so far something it doesn't have controllers you can use hand gestures and voice and your eyes i think this is also a good idea uh, a lot of these headsets other vr mr headsets they have battery or on their headsets which makes them heavy and they also have their these controllers that you have to use in your hands um that's i think apple vision pro is a lot more clean and intuitive in that way uh, battery pack is separate it reduces the weight and it doesn't have a controller you can use gestures hand gestures like like type uh, tapping and all these gestures you can use your voice you can use your eyes to control the headset youtuber notes these the uh, the uh, the one uh, the things that i mentioned the imp under the impressions these were just my opinions based on the presentation and these are youtuber notes of from youtubers who have tried it headset without battery is still heavy because unlike other headsets the apple vision pro is made of metal and therefore heavy youtuber notes eye tracking and hand tracking is really good everyone appears to be impressed with its pass through features which shows your eye on the uh, external display and shows you the user the environment in front of you it's described by people who tried it as almost life like with all the soc innovations and ecosystems this product will be a lot better than other products and eco because of the ecosystem features and this product deserves a lot of attention and a lot of hype but without a clear purpose why this product should exist like iphone has the phone the smartphone apple watch is like for your health there's no clear purpose for this apple vision pro to exist it's just a better television experience 
it it will be a better television experience for one person only because if you're watching a tv with your family uh, every putting headset on all the people that are watching that are going to be watching tv it's just um not intuitive so without a clear purpose why this product should exist and a price tag of 34.99 almost 3500 dollars this product can be dead on arrival can be i'm not saying it is but it can be this could have been in my opinion a thousand dollar external display solution instead of a new computing device just keep everything except the processors just add all the kits and apis and let iphones ipad and mac do all the processing but again apple is a trillion dollar company they probably know what they're doing okay the device is named vision pro does that mean there will be a vision or vision air headset that comes out at lower pro- price probably some some months later or probably next year there's a good chance it will be there's a good chance there will be a vision or vision air because this it's called vision pro good chance but let's see what happens over the next 5 to 10 years uh i think 5 years is a good good timeline to see what happens to a product a uh, new what happens to a new product is it dead or is it is it successful we'll see what happens in the next 5 to 10 years anyways thank you so much for listening thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you guys very very soon